morning. Prune juice, orange juice, tomato, or fig. I don't care, Mr. Link. Neither do I. What will it be? Prune juice, orange juice, tomato, or fig. Avocado. Why, avocados don't have juice. Neither do I, and I've been telling you that for the past four years. I 
is a old hen cater, old Sam. Never rains in California, Wing. You ought to know that. <laughs> Hello, Papa Lovelace. Everything was okay. I'm cooking with gas. Good morning, Mike. Hello, Pat. What's this brat doing here? I told you to keep her home. I'm sorry, Mike, but the woman who takes care of her didn't show up. This well, then get one who does. This is no place for kids. I like you. I don't care if you don't. Please, Francis, you mustn't say such things. This is a free country. That's what the teacher said. She's only a child, Mike. That's what you think. She, she's... Why do you work for that kind of a man, Daddy? He's the best friend I have, Francis. You're wasting your time, Bram. That's what I keep telling Daddy. No, no, no. You go on upstairs. All right, but it's against my will. <laughs> Sorry. Are you sore? Not exactly. After all, you can't help it if she's your child, can you? Don't see how I could avoid it. One thing I'll say for her, full of vinegar. Say, I was worried about you. I was delayed. Elevator got stuck. What? Well, it was business. How was your own schedule? Any complaints? No. Uh, one thing went wrong, though. Jake Lucas didn't open up his stall this morning. What happened to him? I don't know. Well, if he can't open up his place, we'll get somebody who can. You go back up to the office. I'll check on Lucas. Any calls come in, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Right. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lynn. 
Howdy, Benny. Thanks, pal, for the cooperation. Mm -hmm. You took advantage of me just because I'm a woman. That's why I like you, just because you're a woman. I'm beginning to make out a few things. You're only guessing. You haven't a thing to write about. Well, maybe I haven't, but I didn't promise not to get the facts. When you get the facts, that's the time to write. I don't think you'll get it. So don't go sounding off and getting a lot of innocent people in a jam. I'm going to watch you, Mike. What do you think you've been doing for the past three years? But that wasn't business. For the first time, you're right. Now, goodbye. I don't know why I take this from you. You're not good looking. You haven't got a million. In fact, you're a hag. I'm tired, and besides, I'm prematurely gray. And you're pretty. Shut <laughs> oh. <laughs> It is your playground. I want you to keep your dirty paws away from me. Something go wrong? You know what happened. What's on your mind? I'm going to cool you off. You're hot, monkey. And heat will sweat us. Hey, stay away. <laughs> Better be careful. You're so full of larks and you're liable to sink. and you've got three helpers. Only last week you said if business keeps up the way it is, you're going to rent another stall. Oh, I, I was only talking, Grant. When a man gets as old as I am, he has no business working so hard. And anyway, I, I don't like the business. I'm sick of it. After 20 years, I don't believe you. What's wrong, Wilkins? No, nothing. Why, why, why should there be anything wrong? It just doesn't make sense. Well, a man who loves this business the way you do? Well, that's the way it is. That's the way I want it. That's the seventh one that's walked out in three days, and two fires, too. First at the Williams Ranch, and then the Invincible Dairy. And those trucks, it's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. Trucks just don't blow up. You're right, Bram. Trucks just don't blow up. <laughs> Mr. Lynn at home? Oh, you're the young doctor that lives on the fourth floor? Yes. Come right in, sir. Thank you. Oh, hello, Doc. Expected to see you at the hospital, Mr. Lynn. Oh, I've been too busy. Thought you might like to know how the patient's getting on. Well, how is Jake? He's improving. Fortunately, there was no fracture. The police were there talking to him this afternoon. Why tell me? Why don't you tell me to mind my own business? Why don't you? You don't mind if I like you in spite of your surly nature. Why do you always have to be on the defense? Well, now that you're here, why don't you sit down? Thank you. Oh, good evening, Miss Gregory. Hello, Miss Blaine. Come in, gentlemen. Hello, Linda. Why, are you ill? Oh, no. Oh, oh. Oh, he's a neighbor. You remember him. He took care of Lucas. What is your name? Gilbert Page. Uh, Doc Page? This is Linda Gregg. Hello, Doc. You gave me a scare for a moment. Sorry. And uh, this is Inspector Torrance, Sergeant Pringle. You should know them. Uh, they have something to do with the flat foot we gave. Make yourself comfortable, boys. Uh, sit down, Linda. Well, what's the occasion? I got down to the station, and as you mistake to mention you, gotta say, brother, you know, so I thought I'd come along for the ride. We talked to James Lucas today. So what? 
Not a thing. He wouldn't open up. None of them will talk. Listen, Mike, there's something going on, and it doesn't smell like lilacs. All those guys quit in the market. I hear the two fires, and a couple of trucks turn into and go right straight up in the air. So? So everybody shuts up like a clam. I ask them questions. They look at me dumb and innocent-like. I don't like it. You're just sensitive, Inspector. No, inquisitive. Yeah, whatever his name is, Polak. Sister, he slipped on the floor and smashed up 20 crates of spinach or something. He's lying. They're all lying. What do you want from Mike, Inspector? I want the truth. Oh, I know with you, Mike. You, it's always a private fight. Sometimes there's too much at stake for one fellow to carry the load. Now, there's something going on. What the devil is it? You got me, Inspector. I wish I knew. Get this. Oh, that's what it is. Supposing I were to tell you that somebody's trying to bust up the market. That's home in jail. Then what? Do they have to prove it or they want? I don't think you can see it yet. I know I can't. Nobody can. You're a great help, Mike. Both of you. I'll lock you up if you talk. You would if you thought you could get away with it, but you can't. The law demands facts. And proof, Inspector. Oh, We'd have it if they talk. And you're the one to make. No, so. But all you got to say, that's it. Shall I give you a lift, Linda? Oh, well, thanks, Inspector. I'll be seeing you, Mike. Tough going, huh? Could be tougher. Need a friend? Well, I had one. Okay. I don't feel that much, don't I? That's because you have no polish. Is that bad? Is that good? Are you still here? Afraid so. I envy you. Oh, we're old friends. Then I envy you twice. Once for an old friend, and the second time for the fright you're putting in. Are you kidding? No, envy of job, your work, and everything connected with it. You don't listen to that either, Doc. Who is more? Just a teeny bit here and there, piece of meal. Patch up a fracture, find up a few cracked ribs. You, you help to take care of the whole city. You help them to help. Right. It is an important job, especially these days. What are you two trying to give me? It's not just waving the flag, pulling you up and down a string with a crowd to watch. What you're doing is all unheralded. Nobody's going to pin a medal on you. You're kind of cracked on the subject, aren't you? I don't agree with you, Mike. Your market means a great deal to people of this city. I think what you mean is they just took the milk away from the children. Maybe they will. What did you say? Me? Hmm? I didn't say anything. You started this. Why don't you go home? Well, if you say I can come back again, well, all you got to do is knock, and if I answer, come in. Night, Mike. Night. Night, Miss Gregory. Well, Doc, watch the bike. Hello, what are you thinking about? Oh, that Doc. And you, sticking me up on a pedestal. What do you think I am? I know. Well, keep it a secret. It's embarrassing. Can't you take it? Yes, but I'm not used to it. Now, get. Good night, darling. Good night. Morning, Brian. Morning. Oh, Mr. Moore called. What do you want? He said he wanted to see you right away. Let him wait. He's still the boss. I'm the boss. All right, I'll go and see you. Oh, I planted potatoes here someplace, but I can't find them. Oh, my darling, they don't grow on top, you know. You have to dig for them. I guess it isn't done yet. Oh, hello, Michael. Sit down. to get things over and done with. A police commissioner dropped in on me last evening. There's been so many rumors about the market. Well, it isn't exactly a kindergarten. It's a legitimate enterprise, Michael, and there's no place for brawling. It's your job to put a stop to it. Well, it isn't as simple as that. 
As an attorney, don't you think it advisable to hear both sides of the story? There always are two sides, you know. Michael, don't you think you're being a little outspoken? You try right. If you listen, I'll tell you some things you don't know. Some of our old standbys are quitting business. And a lot of the farmers and dairymen have already folded up. Well, whose fault is that? Somebody's putting the pressure on, trying to muscle in. Muscle in? Yes. Make the farmers and commission merchants pay for the privilege of doing business. Somebody's trying to organize a racket. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, notify the police. You talked to the commissioner yesterday. When does he start? Well, all I can say, Michael, is if you're running the case, you will have to put an end to this family. Well, I'll do the best I can, but they're doing nothing against the law. Oh, no. How about the attacks on the wholesalers? Simple assault. Any smart lawyer can beat that rap. No, it's strictly legitimate. There's no law that says a farmer here can't charge 50 cents for The difference goes into somebody's pocket. Oh, they can't do that. The prices are regulated. Well, I only know this, Michael, and I'm speaking to the syndicate. You'll have to take this matter in hand, or, or you'll get a new boy. Well, you see how we're situated? It's so full of red tape, it looks like a ribbon counter. And I tell you to get a new boy right now. Yeah, I'm sore enough to try and clean out that bunch of chiseling grapples. Michael, you know, sometimes we're afraid you'll talk too much for your own good. Our food may come from the earth, but our men should be a little bit. I'd rather keep my feet on the ground, safe. Just a moment, Michael, will you? Mr. Lynn, won't you come here for me? Just like that, huh? I'm Iris Moore. I understand you know something about vegetables. I wish you were wrong. I'm having trouble. Nothing seems to go right. Can you tell me what's wrong? Mm -hmm. You have ants in your plants. Never mind the garden. Let's talk about you. It's a very boring subject. I never heard anyone speak to father the way you just did. Maybe I was a little bit rough on him. Don't you ever talk to him like that? Oh, no. You should try it sometime. Most men like spirit. Most women too. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Tell your father I couldn't wait any longer. I didn't have anything more to say to him, really, anyway. Yes, I'll tell him. Well, so long. Keep your onions straight. I like you. And I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Mr. Lennon? He just liked Father. Hmm. Not a way to look him. Well, he said he was sorry to go and he asked to be excused, but he said he had some important work at the office. Honestly, he apologized all over the place. Lynn apologized all over the place. Well, not only you, Sean. Yes, Daddy. Beautiful. She is gorgeous. Every night when I go to bed, I dream. And you about who? Your wife. No, my letters. <laughs> my wife gives me arguments. My kids give me trouble. But my letters, she gives me pleasure. I know just how you feel. I once used to get a terrific bang out of an old tomato I knew. And speaking of tomatoes. What are you doing here? It's about my onions. You told me to keep them straight yesterday. I followed instructions carefully, but you know what happened? No, what? Nothing. That's why I'm here. Mr. Mike, you're squeezing her too hard. Don't tell me you're going to be a pest. Mm hmm A ladybug. Where's your car? Back there. And that's just where you're going. Oh. Isn't that ugly? No. And you know it. Just the same, you're a pest.
Get him out of there, Pat. Come on, God. What happened, Danny? Somebody stole a brick. You see who it was? No, it came too fast. I wasn't expecting it. You've got to get out of here. But haven't I been helping? Sure, you've been swell, but just the same, you've got to get out of here. Beat it. I'll be back again soon. What happened to him? Uh, he'll be all right. Get him in one of the stalls and call the doctor. See you later, Danny. You never miss a trick, do you? Nope. Who is she? Oh, I don't know. Some kid wanted a job. She's cute. I got more important things on my mind. So have I. What's this all about? Hmm? Oh, just a personal matter. Danny got in an argument with another driver. Mike, if you could lie halfway decently, I could take it, but you can't. Why don't you lay off? I can't. The paper will find me. If I lost my job, I have nothing to see. I mean, not yet. Look here, Linda. Mike! Mike, I've got to talk to you. You don't want me to. That's the right answer. Yes, I'll be running along. What is it? There's been some trouble down at Ryan's Dairy. They wrecked the refrigeration system. One thing after another. Danny's just been hurt, too. See if we get home, all right. Okay, Mike. Mike, I think they ruined everything. They poured some acid in the ammonia. We've been threatened, but I didn't think they'd go through it. Wanted us to raise the price of two cents a quart and hand it over. Two cents? Somehow I remember the trouble started about two days ago. Some of our suppliers hiked the price of cans 50 cents. We paid them. Um, no. Those who didn't had their milk dumped. Yeah. If I could only get some proof, I could go to Inspector Torrance. But first, I've got to get the proof. Brian, what does the shutdown mean? Very little milk for the city. Better get the plant fixed up. Well, when we do, they'll only mess it up again. Two cents a quart is the important point. Nothing's important except those kids get their milk. Do you stand by me? Well, now look, Brian. You and I don't matter. A lot of innocent people are going to take this rap, and I'm not going to let them down for you or anybody else. All right. The price stands. Thanks, Ryan. Now all we've got to do is deliver. Hello, Thompson. What's Johnson doing there? Just handed me his notice. Here's one from Brown and Caraday, too. Anything else? Moore called. He wants to see you right away. He's at his house. Mike, something's got to be done about this right away. If this keeps up, there won't any market. Hello, Moore. What's the matter? I'm afraid I have bad news for you. My shoulders are broad. I can carry a little more. The syndicate held a meeting this morning. Uh, what is it? The trouble at the dairy is smashing up that truck and, and all the other things. What are you getting at? Michael, I hate to be the one to have to tell you this, but I've got to let you go. I argued with him for over two hours, because in spite of all your faults, I still maintain you're the man for the job. Too many against me. I'm very sorry. Believe me, I am. Well, I have you all wrong. You're a regular fellow out. <laughs> we all have our faults. In the meantime, if, if I can be of any service... No, 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 thanks. But I appreciate it. If you ever need me, call on me. I don't forget paper. And that's a good effort. <laughs> Michael. Please call on me sometimes, will you? I hope this doesn't mean that we still can't be friends. I wouldn't miss it. And thanks for softening the floor. Just give up? I've got a living to make, and I'm going to make it. Oh. But what about 
about the people. What about me? You can take care of yourself, but there are a lot of others who can't. Let them worry about that. You mean let little babies worry, little kids who need their milk and mothers who need fresh vegetables to feed them? I'll leave that to the humanitarian. I must have been blind. Me, running around, boosting you to the sky. Mike is this and Mike is that. I'll tell you what you are. You're a hundred percent all right. You're a hundred percent healed. So, you're walking out on me, huh? No, I'm not walking out on you. You're walking out on yourself. Mr. Moore, you don't know Mike. He'd rather take the rap any time than give alibis. I'm sure he could get to the bottom of all this. I think so, too. Now, you got the tangible facts, and then go straight to the police. Uh, Inspector Torrance, I think his name is. And if things turn out as you say, well, we'll only be too happy to talk these all over again, Mr. Lynn. I know Mike went to see a man named Craig, and then there was another one. I think it was Foster. Foster. I'm sure that if the police found these men, it might help clear matters up. Well, you'll get your evidence and then go straight to the police. And he'd get his job back? First, I'm not too sorry we ever sent him away. I won't say anything to Mike just yet. <laughs> I shouldn't have blown up the office. If you hadn't, I'd have been disappointed. Come on. Well, it uh, <laughs> looks like I'm hostess for the evening. Um, would you like a drink? Yes, please.
Well, said it would be over in 20 minutes. He didn't show up. And about a half an hour, I got this call. They picked him up to the headquarters. Stranger, Lynn. Craig, I've been on the wrong side. That's quite an admission coming from you. I had to take quite a beating before I found out. I played the great emancipator. Got a kick in the pants for it. Then I found out it was a cinch to get that extra two cents for a quarter million. <laughs> well, you gave me the idea. You said it wasn't worth that much? I thought I'd show you it was. You did. I know a fellow that's got a little kid just that's all. Couldn't find any place to buy milk for it. I even give him $5 a glass. It was all sold out. You're right. The chumps were paid. What are you going to do about it? I can set up that two cents and we can go from there. The boys at the market are all with me, even though I'm not there any longer. How do I know you're on the level? If I'm not, my life isn't worth two cents. We'll begin on that basis. And as far as we're concerned, I'm advanced. That's all right with me. And we stay within the law. If we make the bullets, they fire them. I'll get your cut fixed up. You'll be plenty satisfied. I'm sure I will. With you? No, dear, he, he's gone away. When will he be here? Well, he asked me to take care of him. Daddy told you that? Mm -hmm. You don't like me. You scolded me. You scolded Daddy. Now you quit talking like that. Yeah, I'll take it. You leave her alone. My, my. 
I Ruth and a busy little girl, aren't you? Can I look at your book? Can you read? Oh, a little. This is my girlfriend. <laughs> Why, this is wonderful. Who drew these beautiful pictures? I did. <laughs> That's the funniest cow I ever saw. That's no cow. Oh, it's funny. What is it? A terrible dragon. You never saw a dragon. Oh, yes, I did. Where? Right here. <laughs> And only you, the buyers of produce, can force these prices down. In my opinion, it is criminal the way they are making you, the taxpayers, carry the bug. Send in your protest, call in, do something. Help me to stop this racketeering, this hijacking of your purses. I have taken up this crusade because of my experience, and I want you to benefit through that experience. Without cooperation, we can do nothing. In unity, there is strength. Everything under control? Not quite. Ryan has to go to court for no reason for that two-cent price of milk. He should be able to do that. Oh, he can. Says the opposition's pretty strong. Syndicates against him. Ryan expects Jeffrey Moore to have the case himself. Pretty smart. <laughs> we'll wait. You've done a good job, Mike. Now, the next step is to get the produce boys in line. Oh, they're already on the hunt. There was a farmer over at River who had to take a slice to lacking, but now he's willing to deliver his lettuce where we tell him. <laughs> we'll have the city eating out of our hands. Rather neatly put. And no ceiling prices to worry about. That'll keep the government off our trail. What about the trial? Well, you should cover that, don't you think? I wouldn't miss it. Order. Order in the courtroom. Isn't it a fact that you raised the price of milk immediately following the accident of your dairy? Yes, sir. But it wasn't because of the accident. You were intimidated, were you not? Sir, I have my dairy and I run it to suit myself. And how do you account for the sudden raise in your prices? Well, production prices have gone up. I have to pay more to the farmer. Distribution costs have risen over 20%. You know, things aren't as cheap as they used to be. If I can't raise my prices, I'll just have to close up. Go, witness. As a member of the board, did you approve this increase? Have the merchants ever asked for police protection? No, sir. Do you suspect they are being intimidated? Well, Jack, sustained. Were your drivers ever threatened? The defense has conclusively proven the rise of the present mark. In view of that, I see no reason to sustain the injunction. The added price of two cents a quart has been definitely proven a necessity. Case dismissed. I've got a stinking hunch you're at the bottom of this holdup. That's a stupid thing for a cop to say. Especially when you let people get murdered and don't do anything about it. That's because we're up against some pretty low types of human beings. Like you, for instance. You'd double cross your own mother if you had one. Keep your hands off me. Mike! It's all right. I've already ordered. But you know what I wanted? I asked for the best. Keeping me happy, huh? I heard what happened. I guess there's no turning back for you now. Not after your little argument with Inspector Powers. I hate nosy coppers. Where are my Lynn? You'll have to watch your step. I leave that to you. You clear the way. I won't stumble. I'll tell you this much, uh, Mike. Up to now, we didn't trust you. Why not? I haven't missed an angle. You still can give us a double cross. We're after slapping cops around. <laughs> I imagine we can trust you from here on in. And I think the big boss will tell you so himself. I'm not interested one way or the other. As long as I get my cut. Where's the studio, Chris? 
Well, this little lady too much isn't good for the child. For well, the child? For well, me either. I don't know what I do. Sometimes I wonder. Here, I'll take it. There we go. Up to the daisy. Why not all the issues of falling to a tight? Yes. Remember, Uncle Mike? I've got to tell you a story before I go to bed. Oh, no. The last time I went to sleep. Yes, and I made off to wear my big doll. And did you look funny in lipstick? Hi, <laughs> Bob. Hi, back, Uncle Mike. There we are. Boom! Let's start to never see me again. Never thought about it. What do you want? Mike, you've got to talk. My father sent me away to the country. What's wrong with the country? Plenty. No deal. Father doesn't want me to see him. Oh, that is serious. More than you think. But what if he finds you here in town? You won't kill him, do you? Oh, guess not. Where are you going to stay? Francis would like yeah, me. Francis would like anybody. But this isn't Grand Central Station. Oh, all right, all right. I guess I'll have to spend the night with Gil. Not all night. You'll spend most of the evening with me. Well, what are you all dressed up for? We'll come down to the U.S. soon. Oh, don't tell me you're going to dance with the boys. <laughs> oh, I should say not. No, they love my donuts. And that's the least I can do for the boys in the service. More than you ever did for me. Saboteur! Hello, Mike. Hello. Mike, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll see you next time. All right. Have a drink, Foster? Thanks. Nothing for him. He's had too much already. Huh. Is everyone okay? Yeah. You got a date with a big shot tonight. Greg say so? Yeah. Looks like we'd be taking orders from you, too. We'd always be taking orders from somebody. Agreed, then. Good night, sweetheart. What's your hurry, baby? Stick around a while. What gives out tomorrow? Tomorrow? Oh, yes. Mel Shaw, one of the commission merchants, wants a little going over. He insists upon cutting the prices. We want kept up. We're leaving for the country. your bag. Get over to my apartment as fast as you can. Yes, it's been an accident. Hurry up. Harris, you don't have to go back. Hey. Oh, no, ah, forget it. I love trouble. Police headquarters. Yes, sir. Right away. It's Mike. What's the matter, Mike? You know you shouldn't phone me. Yes, I know. Captain, listen carefully. I'm supposed to meet the frames tonight. But first, send someone out. Pick up Graham and Foster. He just left my apartment. I'll make the charge later. Yeah. 
got to make it stick this time. Okay, Mike. Get radio car 16. Have him follow Graham or anybody with him. They're at the Palms apartment. I'll be on my way. Have him phone me. Yeah, there are. Bad that. You'll have your fixed up in a couple of minutes. Don't ask any questions. She's been shot. <laughs> A little lower. Don't worry, darling. We'll take care of you. I want to be with you. No, I don't want that. I want to talk to my My. Yes, dear. Put a call through to Inspector Torrance. Yeah, reported everything. So he's in with the cops, huh? Foster and the boy still there? All right, have him trail in wherever he goes. That's all. Hello, Jeff. This is Ken. Something's happened. Oh. Well, oh, he's reported to the police, has he? Going to turn me in? <laughs> oh, then you almost missed a step then, didn't you? In just a few more hours, we would have walked right into the welcoming arms of the police. Now, oh, let us know, Yes, you sure know what to do with them, and, and don't waste any time. See you later. Mike, I hate to do this, but it should be reported. Bill, if anybody can save her, you can. It's got to be done this way. I'll take the responsibility. Mike, you're so sorry. You're fine. You just won't. He, he has a meeting with Mr. Craig. Craig? Ken Craig? Yes. You don't tell me it's all my fault. I will. Don't you worry. Good luck, Bill. You're not leaving. This is your department. I've got another job. Good luck. Thanks, I need you. I will from now on. We're in the jam, honey. So you stand by, will you? I can never feel. You're pretty clever, Moore. I lost my job and was very quiet. You know, 
You shouldn't come breaking into people's houses like this at this time of night. It's upsetting. I'll say, you're ready for a fall. I know now how the whole thing stands. Oh, yeah, that's very unfortunate. You have a cigarette? I hate to do it, this, Lynn, but you give me no alternative. Well, keep up talking. I'm interested in what you have to say. I've got plenty to say. You're pretty smug, you know, making that great talk over the radio. You are for the people. I'll say you are. You're for what you can get out of them. Talk about the fifth column. You invented a new one. The sixth column. The food, one of the most important items for our morale. You stand behind the flag, cheating the people, racketeering babies. They ought to hang you for treason, and they will. Oh, you might get me more. But you'll never get 130 million people. 130 million that hate you and you're kind and everything you stand for. <laughs> it's very dramatic. I have no idea you had it, Emil. Sixth one, eh? Oh, well, that's a new one. And a good one. Too bad, nobody will ever hear about it. What are you doing here? We followed men. Where's Foster? He's listening in, I guess. What happened to him? Oh, then nearly killed it. Made a pass at some gal. Hello, Greg. What's going on? The chief's taking care of him. Well, you better take Graham home and meet me at my place later. I want to take this in personally. <laughs> it's too bad you didn't stick to your word and work with us instead of against us. Because now I'll have to put you out of the way. If he is an attorney, I'll have to figure out a defense. Where? Well, you were in my empire and I fired you. You hated me and broke in here for revenge. I shot you in self-defense. <laughs> it's bad publicity, but I have a reputation and a good one. I'll be able to look it down. In the meantime, the sixth column will go on as though nothing has happened. But something did happen. Someone very close to you was hurt tonight. Iris was shot. Iris? That was in rubbish. Iris is with friends in the country. I wish she had been. She was shot trying to save my life. That's my business. Then you're lying. No, I'm not. She told me about you and Craig. She didn't know what she was saying, but I didn't. You're finished. You'll pay for the death of Graham. I know enough now to make you all walk that last mile. You're not lying about Iris? Where is she? Is she... is she dead? No, she'll probably pull through. But when she finds out her father... Strange how unimportant everything seems just now. Alice, the only thing I have to look for. You got here first, Mike. I was coming to get you next. This is as far as you go. Poor old fellow, he had a lot to live for. I was listening to his defense. What good will that do you? He figured it all out for me. All except the end. That's where I used my head. He said you hated him, we're coming back for revenge, and he had to shoot you in self-defense, but he was wrong. You shot him, and then committed suicide. How do you like that? You don't frighten me, Craig. My life will be over in a second, but not yours. When they catch up with you, they'll march you up a flight of stairs. Somebody will put a black hood over your head, and you'll cry. You'll beg for mercy. And those last few minutes will seem like a lifetime. Shut up! No, you didn't, Linda. You broke a vase.
take care of the doctor. I don't think the courts will let you have it. What's the matter with me? Nothing mentally, but an awful lot physically. You see, Francis seems a mother. Oh. Do they care what she looks like? No. I've got one right here. Oh, no, you yeah. I don't mind taking care of a child, but I wouldn't matter you if you were the last man in the world. <laughs> you heard what she said. She won't mind. I will. Can you cook? Mm -hmm. Can you wash? Ain't it. Well, what can you do? Not you. You do. I need it. Mm -hmm. 